Hi, it's Monday, July 1st. We're tracking major hurricane barrel just now entering the Caribbean and passing over the Windward Islands where surely a horrifying day is unfolding there. The eye just passed over the southern part of the island of Caracou, which is part of the state of Grenada. And the storm went through an owl replacement cycle last night, and this did temporarily weaken the inner core winds. Unfortunately, though, the compact nature of Hurricane Barrel allowed that process to complete much quicker than it usually does. And so several hours ago, the new eye began strengthening, and it's a little larger than yesterday, and it's also stronger now, too. If we look at the aircraft data from the Air Force plane currently flying through the storm, we've seen during the mission the pressure of 960 millibars, 956, 950, falling steadily during the mission, and we'll see what the new measurement is here by the end of this video. Uh, but it has been intensifying, and unfortunately the winds in the eyewall have also come up, especially in the northern and eastern eyewall. Estimated surface winds are now up to 150 miles per hour, making this a strong Category 4, and again, impacting directly some of these islands around Karakou and also other smaller islands that are around Grenada and in the Grenadines. And so surely lots of bad things are happening on the ground, and we hope everyone's staying safe and hunkered down today. The system is moving quickly and will move out pretty fast here within a few hours. Uh, but we have seen hurricane conditions moving through this whole swath of islands. It's difficult to tell what's going on without surface observations on some of these islands, but we can see that St. Lucia up here is seeing tropical storm conditions, at least on the south southern side of the island, with observed winds of 40 to 45 miles per hour. We don't have observations on St. Vincent, but the flight level winds were at hurricane force upstream of them from the aircraft data, so it's possible that hurricane conditions have occurred at times in St. Vincent, especially the southern side, but we don't have any ground truth there. And the main island of Grenada itself, very hard to see on this plot, but it's outlined right about here, and it was right on the gradient of the southwestern eye wall as the eye moved by. So it's already made its closest approach, and conditions may have varied a lot from the southwestern end of Grenada to the northeastern end, where we may have had, and it's it's been observed, tropical storm conditions on the southwestern tip of Grenada. The northeastern side, though, could have seen hurricane conditions. This was very close to the southwestern eye wall, and uh, it's hard to know what's going on there, but we may have had quite a gradient of conditions on that particular island. I wish everyone in this area a speedy recovery from the storm. Surely lots has been done, lots of damage, uh, but hopefully life and property has been safeguarded as much as possible. As Beryl now moves into the Caribbean, we've been talking for days now about how its environment is going to evolve in a way that is going to challenge the storm and likely cause it to weaken. It is very strong right now. It may peak in intensity today. And as it moves into the Eastern Caribbean, wind shear is light and now coming out of the Northwest. But as it starts to gain latitude, it is moving west northwestward, and it's moving into a strong trade wind belt across the Central Caribbean. So the low level easterlies in the lower atmosphere are increasing in strength at the same time that this upper level trough or tut draped across the Central Caribbean is imparting some upper level southwesterly flow in the environment. So that's going to generate a strong westerly shear or at least moderate westerly shear of 25 to 30 knots as the hurricane gets past the longitude of Puerto Rico and moves towards the longitude of Jamaica. So in this zone, the hurricane will suddenly experience a more hostile environment than it has had to date. And we can see that if we look at the model uh, area average soundings here. So if we go back towards the beginning, we'll see that the current shear values are about uh, light, light to moderate values of northwesterly. And as it moves towards the longitude of Puerto Rico, this picks up significantly to moderate to strong values of 28 knots here. And as it continues towards Jamaica, it remains strong, peaking at about 32 knots on the GFS. And here it is approaching the longitude of Jamaica, moves over Jamaica on the GFS, and then you see that the shear values actually start decreasing as it moves into the Western Caribbean. And the reason for that is if we go back to the map, as the hurricane moves towards the northwest, it does encounter the tut and the shear increases, but this tut is thinning and the hurricane is throwing out lots of upper level outflow and that outflow can combat the tut, if you will, and eventually forces it to split into two pieces. So you'll see this split off and move west. So if I continue in the model run, once it's in the Western Caribbean, you see there's kind of a piece over the Gulf and then the main tut piece over to the east of the Bahamas. And in between, we're seeing a bit of a break in the trough axis. And so the wind shear starts to decrease and the hurricane 
encounters less hostile conditions as it approaches the Yucatan Peninsula at the end of the forecast. So we're about to see Beryl go through favorable conditions today and then unfavorable conditions in the Central Caribbean and then back to potentially favorable conditions in the Western Caribbean. If we look at the European model, we see something similar to the GFS where the max shear values are about 32 knots as it's moving southwest of Jamaica on this model. And on the European, this affects the storm less than it does on the GFS. On the European model, it remains a hurricane even as it passes by Jamaica. On the GFS, though, we saw this pressure value rise all the way above 1,000 millibars, so this would not be a hurricane anymore. This would be a tropical storm on the GFS. And we get a mixed bag of reactions from the high-resolution models as well. This is HAFS A, showing at peak intensity, hurricane barrel, and then as it moves past Puerto Rico, you'll see this pressure value start to rise from the 950s into the 970s and then the 980s. This is pretty dramatic weakening here, at least 30 millibars of filling. So this would be a weakening hurricane on approach to Jamaica. It does interact with the island a little bit, which could also weaken it some if it's passing over the mountains of Jamaica. And then it moves into the Western Caribbean and begins to re-strengthen just at the last moment before moving into the northern Yucatan Peninsula by the end of the week, Thursday night or Friday. The HAFS B model, fairly similar here, peak intensity south of Puerto Rico, and then weakening significantly as it approaches Jamaica, moves just south of the island, but remains a hurricane, unlike the other model, which weakens to a tropical storm for a time. And then it also re-strengthens some on approach to the Yucatan Peninsula as conditions get more favorable once again on Thursday night. So a variety of possible outcomes here that depend on exactly how fragile the vortex is to the 30 knots of shear that is about to be imposed on it. It will be imposed on it for at least a day, day and a half, and that's enough time to significantly disrupt the inner core. So weakening of barrel is the expectation, but it could still be a hurricane and it could still have winds as high as, you know, like 100 miles an hour as it's approaching Jamaica. It could be weaker than that too, it could be a minimal hurricane but it's going to be hard to forecast that with accuracy at this point. And so there's a range of potential intensities as it's moving through this area. And its track is going to matter a lot here too, of course. We are seeing this upglide in the, in the storm gaining latitude, but whether it hits Jamaica or moves toward its south, uh, that's still an open question. We have seen a little bit of a shift southward in the model guidance over the last couple of days. They uh, originally had it crossing the islands near St. Vincent, but now that it's crossing closer to Grenada, that has shifted this portion of the track slightly toward the south as well. And so it is now unclear whether Jamaica will get a direct hit, and by extension, the Cayman Islands, which are directly downstream of Jamaica, whether they get a direct hit probably depends on whether this goes south of Jamaica or over it. Speaking of the track, this is the GFS mid-level steering flow from the ensemble mean showing that there's a, a weak ridge over the Bahamas right now. So again, this is going to gain latitude, but then it's going to bend back toward the west for a time. And that's because this big ridge over the southern US is going to strengthen and move over the southeastern states. And so you'll see that happen by Wednesday. And so you'll see this building in here. And here's the hurricane now after moving more north for a while, bends back toward the left on most models. And again, whether this is over or south of Jamaica, kind of unsure yet. Same with the Cayman Islands, and then it ends up in the Western Caribbean somewhere by late Thursday. And at this point, the ridge over the southeastern U.S. starts to weaken and shift towards the east a little bit, and there's a little bit of a weakness that starts developing over Texas. So if this were to cross over the Yucatan Peninsula, it would really depend on where it is. If it's buried far to the south, it would likely keep going west into Mexico. If it crosses farther north, though, and it ends up here, it could follow the steering flow more towards the north and be a potential threat to northern Mexico or south Texas. So when we're thinking long term, if you're in the U.S., you're feeling pretty good if you're in the eastern part of the Gulf of Mexico, and you're feeling better with every southward shift of the modeling. If you're in Texas, every nudge to the south over the last couple of days has been better news for you long term, but we can't rule out the storm trying to glide northwestward over the Gulf of Mexico just yet. It really depends on where it hits the Yucatan Peninsula. This is the current set of model tracks just to kind of hit that home. Here's the trend now has gone from over Jamaica to south of Jamaica. The GFS is over the island. Most other models are just toward the south. Again, can't rule out the direct hit as these could shift back north. It just depends 
on what happens over the next day or day and a half in the Eastern Caribbean. The trends have not been friendly though to the Yucatan Peninsula and Belize. So Eastern Mexico, Belize, Guatemala should be paying close attention here as you could be seeing a hurricane weakened from where it is now, but potentially re-strengthening on approach to the coast in about four days. So we're talking about midweek, Thursday, Thursday night, that's when we're looking for barrel to arrive. If you're in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, uh, you're looking at two days before arrival in Jamaica, two and a half before the Caymans, and you are feeling good about every nudge south that we can get in the track that's helping you guys out, but certainly not out of danger yet, and we're still watching very carefully for, for the potential for barrel to move right through these areas, and a direct strike cannot be taken off the table yet. And this is the National Hurricane Center official advisory showing that there is a hurricane watch now issued for Jamaica. So the risk is there and we'll see whether we get additional watches going forward for other areas downstream such as the Cayman Islands. There is a tropical storm watch for the southern coastline of Hispaniola. The hurricanes now forecast to pass far enough to the south that wind is not really the big problem here, but maybe some spiral bands causing heavy rain and potential for flash flooding over the mountainous terrain is the big thing to watch for Hispaniola. Feeling better about eastern Cuba, pre presuming that the storm does in fact go south of, of Jamaica, impacts should be limited in eastern Cuba, but if we see a track closer to or north of Jamaica, then eastern Cuba would get more impacts than currently anticipated. You can see again by Thursday night, early Friday morning, that's when we're expecting arrival somewhere in the Yucatan Peninsula. And beyond that point, uh, not really sure yet what's going to happen in the western Gulf of Mexico. It depends on whether it's on the northern side of these possibilities or on the southern side of these possibilities. So we're watching this in Mexico, watching this in Texas too, just warily, and uh, always have a hurricane plan ready just in case. But at the moment, the trend has been friendly to the United States, not so friendly though to Mexico and Belize and the rest of the Yucatan Peninsula region. There is another system to talk about briefly just to the east of Barrel. There's Invest 96L, a weak system with a possibly nearly closed circulation here, but limited thunderstorm activity mostly on the western side. And there's northeasterly shear hampering development at the moment. And models were bullish on this for a while over the last few days, bringing it toward the Lesser Antilles in a few days. And some models had it developing and strengthening, uh, but the trend has abruptly changed over the last 24 hours. And most modeling now shows little development of this system as it moves in. This is an example of the GFS, lower level vorticity or spin in coloring. So there's barrel, a big paint bomb there near the islands. And here is Invest 96L. And the black wind barbs of the upper level wind showing the easterly flow over top of it, causing wind shear that's hampering development. And the shear persists and actually gets enhanced by the upper level outflow from barrel rotating clockwise back down over 96L, enhancing wind shear values and preventing significant intensification of the system. And this is an open tropical wave moving through the islands, which will certainly bring disturbed weather, but a fortunate trend here that we won't necessarily see two storms back to back in the islands during the recovery efforts post barrel we really don't want to see another tropical storm or hurricane moving through so for now the trend has been good we'll see if that continues the national hurricane center still gives a 30 to 60 percent chance of development of 96l during the next two to seven days so there is still a chance uh, that it is able to come together but the trend in the modeling has been toward less development which is good news that's about it for this video. Again, thinking about all those in the path of barrel, especially these islands that just received a direct hit from the eye wall, and we hope that life and property has been preserved as much as possible. Best of luck with the recovery effort to everyone who's there. And we'll be watching for impacts next to Jamaica and the Cayman Islands in a couple days, and then the Yucatan Peninsula beyond that. Uh, I am going to be hopping on a plane later today, and so my schedule might get a little strange over the next couple of days. I'm shifting time zones by six hours from Hawaii to the East Coast, so I'll try to get a video out tomorrow, but depending on what jet lag allows me to do, I'm not sure what time of day that will be. So please bear with me if the schedule is odd, and I will be on a travel tech setup as well, so the audio quality of these videos may degrade just because I'm I'm using a laptop, essentially, so we'll see how it goes. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.